Hey guys, Colin here, and welcome back to the channel where we bring you Christian commentary about the things that matter. As ever, please know this isn't a sinful attack, but rather a biblical critique. In today's video, we're going to keep talking about Kevin Max's recent post about Jesus. And just for context, this is actually part two of our content on this topic. See the first video link in the description. But in any case, Kevin Max is a former member of the Christian band DC Talk. But these days, he's more consistently known for either rejecting or misrepresenting Jesus to people on social media. Again, before I read this post, just know that I will be replacing that controversial word which starts with an A to the word baby killing, so YouTube will not get upset and keep punishing our channel. In any case, the post said this, quote, Just a reminder for my Christian friends. Jesus was a non-violent, radical revolutionary who hung around with lepers, hookers, and crooks, wasn't American and never spoke English, was anti-wealth, anti-death penalty, anti-public prayer, Matthew 6, 5, but was never anti-gay, never mentioned baby killing or birth control, never called the poor lazy, never justified torture, never fought for tax cuts for the wealthiest Nazarenes, never asked a leper for a copay, was a long-haired, brown-skinned, homeless community-organizing Middle Eastern Jew. Now, in the previous in this video, we talked about the first half of this post, about Jesus being a non-violent revolutionary who hung out with hookers and being anti-wealth and anti-death penalty, apparently, etc. But in this video, we're going to continue analyzing the post and comparing it to scripture, because unfortunately, hot takes like this one are all too common, false as they may be. So let's jump back in, starting with Kevin's claim that Jesus was, quote, anti-public prayer, Matthew 6, 5. And because he references scripture, we have to take a look at it, shall we? In Matthew 6, 5 through 6, Jesus says this, quote, And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door, pray to your father who is in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. So there it is. Jesus was 100% against public prayer, right? Wrong. This is a misrepresentation of the Bible's teaching on prayer, which is being used to represent Jesus as some sort of cool modern spirituality guru, rather than those pesky religious people. But again, this statement is only half true at best. Jesus' comment here is about praying in private, and it has to be taken in context. And in context, he's actually refuting the idea of praying in public in order to be hypocritically noticed and revered by others. That's why the direct example of this principle is not a person praying out loud before dinner with their family. No, the direct example of this principle that he's talking about is that of a hypocritical Pharisee deliberately aggrandizing themselves publicly through prayer. And this would explain why in the very same chapter, Matthew chapter 6, Jesus publicly offers the Lord's Prayer as an example for his disciples. If Jesus was banning any and all public prayers, then surely he would not immediately follow that up with a public prayer. But of course, there's a clear agenda in this post, and that's why it's missed the mark entirely. This isn't an honest mistake. No, it's an attempt to tell conservative Christians that wanting prayer in their schools or in their governmental meetings is is something that Jesus would disapprove of. There is an obvious, politically correct, liberal agenda behind this post, and it really shows. But the next statement made in the post is that Jesus was, quote, never anti-gay. And this is something that the progressive Christians love to say. Jesus never condemned homosexuality, so I'm just following Jesus when I affirm it. First off, this argument proves nothing, because even if Jesus said nothing about homosexuality, that wouldn't be proof that he affirmed it. So the argument fails right out of the gate like a three-legged horse in the Kentucky Derby. But second, Jesus did condemn homosexuality. In Matthew 4, 4, Jesus says, quote, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. In God's word, in both the Old and New Testaments, homosexuality is called a sin. See Leviticus 18.22 and see Romans 1.26-27. Through 27. So when somebody tells you that Jesus said nothing about homosexuality, feel free to direct them to Jesus' actual statements that we ought to live by every word of God. 
And of course, this includes every word of God that calls homosexuality a sin. And more than this, the post from Kevin Mack says that Jesus, quote, never mentioned baby killing, although of course he used that dreadful word that starts with A. But again, Jesus did talk about these things, but he did it through pointing us to his inspired word. In Psalm 139, David says, quote, that he was fearfully and wonderfully made by God personally in the womb. Therefore, it is deeply sinful, it's murderous, to kill a baby in the womb, as it is a human being made in the image of God. David did not say that he was a cluster of cells, but rather that he was still David, even in the womb. So Jesus didn't need to directly condemn baby killing again, because it's already been condemned several times in his word. This argument is so absurd, it's laughable. I mean, think about it. Jesus also never specifically condemned the sin of setting someone else's house on fire. Does that mean that you have the right to do it? Of course not. There is so much pride, so much arrogance behind the idea that Jesus has to repeat every command in Scripture three times over in order for you to actually follow it. In reality, if you're actually listening to Jesus, he tells you to submit to the entire Word of God. He is under no obligation to state every command three times over during his earthly ministry just because 2,000 years later a bunch of progressive Christians are going to get upset about it. And in the next statement offered in the post, it's that Jesus, quote, never justified torture. And I would agree with that. But the next part of the post says that Jesus, quote, never fought for tax cuts for the wealthiest Nazarenes. And again, here we have the argument being made from silence. The problem is that we don't have the text. We don't have Jesus ever specifically giving an exact tax rate that the wealthiest Nazarenes should be paying. Yes, Jesus did tell people to pay their taxes, see Matthew 20. 221, but there is no objective argument from Jesus' own words that would tell us how much we ought to tax people. So this argument proves literally nothing. And the next point is that Jesus, quote, never asked a leper for a copay. And this is perhaps the most absurd point out of the whole bunch, and that's really saying something. Basically, a copay, as it's being referred to here, is an amount of money that you pay for a medical good or service from your own pocket. And the argument being made seems to be that Jesus never asked people to pay for him to heal them, and therefore doctors today shouldn't ask for any money when they help heal someone. This is being said to promote the liberal idea of free health care for all from a Christian point of view, and someone needs to say it. This claim is absolutely asinine. The fact that Jesus did miracles, did healings for free, does not in any way prove that doctors today cannot ask for money. In fact, 1 Timothy 5.18 says, as, quote, the laborer deserves his wages, end quote. And just to be clear, the context of this passage refers to paying pastors, not doctors, but the general principle still applies. If pastors can be paid for spiritual help, then why can't doctors be paid for physical help? Is being a doctor labor? Yes, of course it is, and therefore doctors deserve to receive wages in exchange for their work. And how are doctors supposed to receive these wages if the people whom they're treating don't pay them any money? Oh, I suppose the government is supposed to pay for all of that. Well, where do we find that principle in Scripture? Again, we have to see that the arguments being made in this post lack any kind of biblical support. They just assume the validity of the liberal political agenda and then thrust that agenda into the ministry of Jesus. It's like a child desperately throwing a bunch of spaghetti at the wall, seeing if any of it sticks. But of course, all you end up with is a massive mess on the floor that someone else has to clean up. This post finishes off, though, saying that Jesus was, quote, a long-haired, brown-skinned, homeless community organizing Middle Eastern Jew. And again, we see them desperately trying to turn Jesus into a cool hippie in a tie-dye shirt protesting the Vietnam War with two peace signs planted firmly in the air. This is what you call a caricature, folks, not an accurate description. First off, we do not know how long Jesus' hair was specifically. Length of hair is culturally relative, but one thing we do know is that Jesus would have been easily identifiable as a man because he was not a cross-dresser. So basically, his hair would have looked however it would be appropriate for a man's hair to look in his day. As far as him being brown-skinned, I'm not sure why that would even matter, seeing as how that's not relevant to his ministry and the exact tint of his skin is not mentioned in Scripture. It's almost as if we're not supposed to care. We can only guess from historical and geological 
context, but it seems that this post has a distinct goal in mind, a picture that they're trying to conjure up when you think of Jesus. And given the fact that virtually the entire post is dishonest and lacks any evidence, I don't think we need to take our cues from these people on anything. Then it calls Jesus a, quote, community organizer. And this makes it sound like he's some sort of roving grassroots liberal with a political axe to grind. This is obviously misleading, and as we've said before, it's a half-truth at best. The only community that Jesus organized was the church. And to draw a comparison between this and some leftist hippie organizing a protest on the street is absolutely absurd. In fact, it's borderline blasphemous. But here's the real point. This post has utterly misrepresented Jesus at virtually every turn, and it's doing this for the sake of affirming a modern liberal political agenda that the Bible does not promote. They are remaking Jesus in their own image, essentially, but the Jesus described here is not the Jesus of Scripture. Rather, it is a caricature of Jesus that a modern liberal ideologue made up in his head. In other words, this isn't Jesus. It's an idol named Jesus, and therefore it is tantamount to dangerous false teaching and idolatry. And as Christians, we should reject this entirely. And please know this, I do not offer any of this correction from a high and mighty position. I am nothing but a wretched sinner saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. So let's pray for Kevin Max, that he would stop this falsehood by God's grace and turn to the truth of God's word. Thank you so much for watching that video. Please give us a like and subscribe so that you don't miss any content. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our Rumble channel as well, just in case YouTube ever takes us down. The link is in the description. And before you go, take a look at this list here. These are the people who make all of the free content you see on this channel possible with their monthly support. Today's highlighted channel supporter is Cheryl J. If you also want to help and become part of the solution today, hit the link in the description. Every little bit keeps us independent and helps us immensely here on the channel. So I hope you'll consider joining the Truth Army today, and until next time, fight for truth, never surrender, and keep your eyes open. Thank you, and God bless.